Hello everyone, this is Marcel. Welcome to my channel. So, for today I want to discuss this concept of pain and pleasure. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about whips and chains, though I suppose it could apply to that. No, what I'm talking about here is the varying thresholds of the individual in regards to pain and pleasure, and the unusual way that it can almost blur together under certain circumstances or with certain people. I thought up this topic one day while I was driving around thinking about why is it that some guys get stuck in the blue pill world? Like, why do they roam around there for so many years? You figure there has to be more to it than just getting laid. I know a lot of the people that like to troll my channel and say, oh, that MGTOW are just guys that can't get laid. That's the stereotype, that every guy just wants to get laid. I wonder if those same people would argue against the idea that all women just want resources. And any woman that's out looking for a boyfriend must just be broke. <laughs> I can hear him now. Oh no, that's completely different because vagina. So I'd like to compare getting a girlfriend to like getting a tattoo. You know, some are good, some are bad, some look like shit, some look great, and they all wind up changing us for a little while, if not for a long time. They kind of stick around, at least by effect, if not literally. So why is it some people get tattoos in the first place? Now, I, I realize the obvious answer would be, well, yeah, to have something colorful on their body, right? And it's not entirely true. There are a number of different reasons why people would get something like that on them. Yes, of course, some want it so they'll have a colorful piece of art on their body, but just wanting art doesn't mean you have to have it plastered on you nor does it mean that you'll want it there forever. So why go through the pain of having something etched on our bodies? If you dive a little deeper, you'll find that some people get them because they want to establish a sense of self-ownership. They want to customize who they are and how they're perceived. It's a form of expression. Some people want to do it in the sense of rebellion. They get it to forcibly establish that they own their body and that no one can stop them. A good example might be a young person getting one to show their oppressive parents who's boss, establishing themselves as a unique adult. Any of this sounding familiar? To sort of get to my point here, regardless of the reasoning behind getting it in the first place, there are definitely two classes of people, if not more, that will get them. There's the type of person that would want to close their eyes and wake up and find it there. They don't want to go through the trouble of the pain of getting it carved in. They just want it to be there as if it were done. Then you have the type of person that actually likes sitting down and feeling that needle grind into them and going through all of that. And then after hours and hundreds of dollars, if not thousands later, they look in the mirror and they see what they've accomplished and they're like, yeah, I feel awesome. Or whatever the female equivalent to that would be. Some people almost enjoy the experience of acquiring it, of getting it, the struggle of going through that, more so than the ink itself. And for that type of person, there's a pretty good possibility that they're not going to want to stop getting tattoos. They're going to want to keep going through that over and over again because they get to where they like the euphoria of both the accomplishment of having it done and the pain of going through it. So when it comes to relationships, I would expect to see as much diversity of thought as I would in that. I'm gonna speak mostly from a male's perspective for obvious reasons. Sure, the upfront answer as to why guys would go blue pill or be blue pill in the first place is just their anatomical need to reproduce, to hit the bedroom. I get it. That's a big part of it. Would it be surprising to find that for most guys, there's a lot more to it than that? Looking back at it from my blue pill days, when I dated, I was actually far more likely to turn down a trip to the bedroom. An early access pass was almost a turnoff and something of a red flag to me. Come to think of it, there were times when I would date and flirt with women and the point where they started wanting to get serious in a physical way, I would actually back off. I would dump them. Not like I would ever play games with them or anything, it's just for me, there were times, especially after I'd been through enough toxic breakups, that I was just more interested in getting the approval of saying, yeah, I like you, Marcel. You're a pretty awesome fella. I'll go out with you. I want to be your girlfriend. But people want to seem to think that that's the hardest part. 
and here I was getting beyond that threshold of friend zone and then walking away. And why would I do that? Well, honestly, from my perspective, the uh, chase was always more fun than actually dating. Once everybody started swapping titles and I was labeled a boyfriend, I uh, got treated like shit. Whereas beforehand, they were sweet and charming and compassionate. From the minute you hold their hand, it's like she busts out this laundry list and all of a sudden you're owned by her. Yeah, of course, there were some of them that I stuck with for a long time, but for the most part, I didn't want to be a boyfriend. I just wanted to date women, not to be confused with getting in the bedroom with them. You could almost say I was addicted to the validation that they wanted to be with me in the first place. Not to get too deep into it, I believe that came from when I was younger, not ever getting it. Female validation. I was the type of snake that everyone would ignore and that led me to try even harder and improve myself in ways that I almost got noticed automatically. Now summing up the tattoo analogy, there are some guys that want to close their eyes and open them and just have a girlfriend or a wife be there. No work involved, she's there, she's ready for him, and they have a perfect little house and family and that's, that's all the guy's looking for. He doesn't need any of the extra work or drama. There are some that specifically seek out the women that are going to give them a hard time. They like the chase or they like the way that women are treating them. There are some that want to have a woman just to establish to society that they're a real man. Kind of a rite of passage into adulthood. Anyway, I would establish that there are probably more reasons outside of the bedroom that a guy in the blue pill mindset would want to have a girlfriend than there are for purely the idea of getting laid. The same could be said of a lot of different aspects in human life, though. Take, for example, working a hard job. Not at all to compare modern dating with anything positive, but some guys will go to work, they'll punch in, they'll do the minimum necessary, punch out, come home, and collect a paycheck, and that's all they're in it for. If the paycheck were to ever stop, they would move on to a better job or a different job. Whereas other guys will go and they'll work really hard at what they do and they'll come home feeling sore and tired and accomplished. The pain of the effort of the day, that exertion, gives them a sense of accomplishment and euphoria. That particular mind frame could be at risk for getting trapped into a job that doesn't pay as well as uh, it could or doesn't treat the employee as well as they could. Now, at a certain point, they're going to reach a level of so much pain that it's no longer worth it. Although, there are some guys with that personality that you could almost not pay them, and they would still do the same job because they're not really in it for a paycheck. And I think that the modern woman, if you want to say it that way, has tapped into that drive, that initiative, and twisted it in on itself where the guys are doing that kind of effort within relationships and in a sense not really getting paid for it. Doing that is like working that hard job and feeling accomplished but not earning a paycheck whatsoever or not even feeling accomplished after a while. Getting disrespected by the boss when they're there. Now imagine for a moment if that motivated guy were to take and turn and put all of that energy into self-improvement, how productive they could be for themselves, what they could accomplish. So in a sense, the MGTOW philosophy is almost like all those guys going into that corporation, working that job for free, are finally saying, wait, wait, we're coming home, we're not feeling accomplished anymore. We're not getting anything out of this, we're not getting paid. The work sucks, then the boss is an asshole. Well, we're done. We're gonna go home and work for ourselves. Well, of course, the company's gonna resist that. They want free employees. All the tactics in the world, from shaming them, from making them seem that they won't survive without the job. Any guy without a metaphorical job, like a nine to five job, isn't a real man. Have you ever told somebody, just For any of you that have experienced this, that you have your own business, I have, and they kind of roll their eyes at you like, yeah, whatever. What, out of your mother's basement? There's a lot going on behind this concept of why men put themselves through so much for so little, and it's almost that they're getting brainwashed. Because in the end, guys are wired differently when it comes to tolerances and pain. They're psychologically or chemically rewarded for putting in effort and seeing something get accomplished. 
I'm sure through evolution it was probably a survival technique. You know, when Thug built the best mud hut, he got the best girls and got to breed and got to survive a little longer when the mammoths didn't break it down. Like so many other things that men think chemically about, guys have to evolve past that point and think more logically. Outside of the euphoric response of accomplishing something that doesn't actually benefit them directly or even indirectly. Don't work at a job for a sense of accomplishment. See that it's actually paying. Don't get a tattoo to show the parents who's boss. Do it for the appreciation of the tattoo itself. Don't allow that euphoric sense of accomplishment to sway the necessity or the relevance of the task that's getting done in the first place. All of that seems pretty straightforward, right? So why in the hell is it such a shocker and so wrong to not want to invest into a relationship that pays off nothing? Put all of that work and pain in for this supposed pleasure that half the time doesn't even show up, or at the least is used as a tool to extract more motivation. Anyway, let me know down below what you think. If you agree, disagree, was I all over the place with this one? I want to hear your thoughts. This has been Marcel.